So the next question is that a customer wants to implement a route reflector in their BGP environment to simplify simplify the route propagation, uh, extend the concept of the route reflector, and how they differ from the configuration. Okay. So we can implement BGP in two uh, flavors. We can implement something called IBGP. We can implement something called eBGP. When we configure BGP between two routers that belong to different autonomous system, 100 and 200, then this is what we refer to as eBGP, external BGP. Uh, these routers are eBGP, neighbors, peers, speakers. And when we implement BGP within the autonomous system, like both the devices, both the router belong to the same autonomous system, uh, when we configure the BGP here, this is what we refer to as the iBGP. In eBGP, there is an attribute called AS path attribute, which is used to prevent any potential loop in the eBGP environment. In case of iBGP, there is a rule called iBGP split horizon. iBGP split horizon rule says that a route that you have received from one of your iBGP neighbor, you cannot advertise it to another iBGP neighbor. So if this is like 1.1.1.1 slash 32, this route was advertised to router number two. Router number two can receive and install that route in its table, but it cannot advertise that route to the neighbor router. Right, so that is what we refer to as the IBGP route reflector. To overcome this IBGP split horizon uh, rule, which is there for the loop prevention, because if this route gets advertised to the neighboring router, then neighboring router advertises it to the next router, then it advertises it to the next router, and then it comes back to router one, it might cause a loop here as well. So to deal with this IBGP split horizon, like because if routes are not getting advertised up to router number three, this router number three will never be able to know about this subnet. As a result, traffic will not pass. So to uh, you know handle this, to overcome this IBGP split horizon rule, like to advertise the prefixes from here to all the way to the all the routers in the network, what we can do, we can either go for IBGP full mesh which means like every IBGP router must be configured as a neighbor with the other router. So if we have, let's say, for example, four router, this, 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 then this, then this, then this, like all these devices will form the BGP neighborship. IBGP full mesh neighborship will be required to advertise these routes from one device to all the other devices. Second thing what we can do, we can use this concept called route reflector. If you don't want to use this IBGP split horizon, what we can do, we can use this concept of route reflector. So I can configure this device, router number two, for example, as the route reflector. So this device will receive these routes and it will reflect those routes towards the other devices. Then I will configure this device as the route reflector as well. So this device will receive the route and reflect the route towards the other devices. So route reflector is the router that reflects the route from one of the IBGP router to another IBGP router while maintaining the loop free environment. Loops will still not form. So now how this route reflector actually works. In route reflector, we have the concept of route reflector server. We have the concept of route reflector client and we have the route reflector non-client. So let's say for example, router one, router two, router three, router four, there are four routers, all belongs to the same AS number 100. And here we have a subnet 1.1.1.1 slash 32. So the subnet information will be advertised to the neighbor router. Router number two will receive it. And router number two will not advertise it to the router number three. So we need to configure it as the route reflector. How can we do that? We will go under the router BGP configuration. We will say neighbor, neighbor IP, such as for example, for router two, this is my neighbor. So neighbor IP, whatever it is. And then I will use the command after that route reflector client. As soon as I use this command, this router becomes client and I become server. So I become the route reflector. This router two becomes the route reflector for this client router number three. 
we don't need to configure like uh, I am the route reflector or something like that. This device will become the route reflector and this will become the client. And the remaining devices such as for example, router number one, it will be non-client, right? It will be non-client, non-client and all that. Now the rule is if a route reflector receives the route from the non-client, it can advertise it to the client and it can ad like this non-client routes received from the non-client, it can advertise it to the client and it cannot advertise those routes to the other non-client. So this will okay, this will be not okay. Let's say for example, here we had another router, here we had router number 5 and I just configured router number 3 as my client. In that situation, router number 2 will receive the updates from the non-client. It will advertise it here, but it will not advertise that to another non-client. So non-client to non-client, routes are not reflected. Non-client to client, a route is reflected. And here, let's say for example, here it is like 3.3.3.3. Let's say from here I receive a route. So when I receive the route from the client, a route reflector can advertise it to the client and it can advertise it to the non-client. So the prefix will be advertised to here and the prefix will also be advertised to here. So client to client, client to non-client routes are going to be reflected. This is the rule that they follow. So what we should do, we should configure router number two as the route reflector so that it reflects the route from here to here. Also, I should configure this as the client so that the routes it receives from here also gets reflected. Now the problem is that I need to go on router number three also. And this router number three, I need to configure at route as a route reflector for this client. So this I need to mark as client. So route number three, I will go on router number three. I will say neighbor, neighbor IP and route reflector client. So this becomes server for this client and this remains the client. Now it will receive the route from, from the server and it will advertise it to the client as well. And this process can keep going on and on and on if you have multiple devices. This is how the route reflector works. The problem with the route reflector is that if there are many devices, then we need, we need to configure like all these devices as the route reflector, route reflector, route reflector, route reflector, which again, loops will not occur because in route reflector we have, whenever the route reflector reflects the route, it adds something called originator ID and something called cluster ID as the attributes in the prefixes that it has reflected. Originator ID is the router ID of the router that has originated the route into the network and cluster ID cluster ID is just like the AS path list. We have this concept called cluster ID. Cluster ID is the ID of the route reflector. Uh, it, it will be default like router ID otherwise we can configure it as per our requirement as well. So there will be a list of these cluster IDs in the prefix as well such as if the router one has reflected the route and it has the router id as 1.1.1 it will be mentioned as 1.1.1.1 uh, if we have changed the cluster id by yourself then that id will be uh, written down here then the then the traffic then the route then the route went to route number two and route number two was also the route reflector so its cluster id will be added in this cluster list as well so using the originator id and the cluster id or cluster list if i say uh, loops are prevented in the route reflector environment. If a router receives a route and it sees its own router ID as the originator ID, it will not accept the prefix. If the router receives a prefix, if a router receives a route and the cluster list in the cluster list, it sees its own cluster ID, then it will of course not accept that prefix. Right, so we have this concept of cluster ID and originator ID to prevent any potential loop in the router reflector environment. However, the problem remains the same. If there are a lot of routers, we might need to configure many router reflectors in the environment. Typically one or two router reflectors you will see in an IBGP environment. So we have like two routers acting as the router reflector and all these rest of the routers, all these routers that we have, all these routers will form the neighborship with these routers they will advertise their routes and these routes will get reflected to the other devices. They can also connect to the external network as well. So everyone is supposed to, you know, form the neighborship with the route reflector and the routes gets advertised via them towards the other devices. So in a large environment, like where configuring route reflector might not be a very uh, good idea, we can also go for configuration. Configuration comparatively, you know, uh, 
is simple as compared to the router detector. However, it is suitable for a fresh deployment. What happens in the configuration if we have like uh, an autonomous system configured and we have a lot of routers such as router 1, router 2, router 3, router 4, router 5, router 6, like a lot of routers are there. What we can do, we can configure these routers in sub autonomous system like we can create within the autonomous system we can create sub autonomous system we can configure like two routers in one sub autonomous system we can configure three routers in sub autonomous system i will say this is sub autonomous system number one this is two this is three so here config ibgp config ibgp config ibgp config ibgp and here config ebgp ebgp rules will be applied to advertise the routes from one point to other point so in configuration we break a big autonomous system into small autonomous systems however in case of route reflector the con the as remains as it is we just configure two routers or maybe more than two routers to reflect the routes from one route from ibgp neighbor to another ibgp neighbor configuration here, uh, configuration configuration can also be used with the router reflector, such as here, config IBGP, config IBGP, routes received from one of the IBGP neighbor will not be advertised to the IBGP neighbor. So we need to configure it as the router reflector as well. So we can use like both at the same time as well. So these are some general, you know, uh, differences between the router reflector and configuration. Based on the requirement, either the companies can go for the route reflector or they can, if they have like big network or Maybe there were multiple organizations and some sort of merger has happened. This was part of AS10, this was part of AS20, this was part of AS30. They all has found some sort of, you know, BGP neighborship and all. So a merger has happened and all of them now belong to a same autonomous system, a BGP, let's say, for example. We can migrate from one autonomous system to other, but if it is not possible, we can make them part of a confederation autonomous system such as it. So this is going to be the main autonomous system and these will be considered as the sub autonomous system in this case. So different different approaches we can take to uh, configure the sub, uh, sub autonomous systems in configuration environment or we can simply configure the route reflectors.